Hello students, welcome to our live lesson. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we're going to look at 10 important and useful idioms that you can use in your everyday life. Um, again, it's really important to study and learn these idioms because um, the chances are that you will probably hear people using these idioms. So it's really good if you know what they mean. And if you can use them, you're going to sound very fluent, very natural. You'll have a good grasp of the language. Before we get into today's lesson, uh, please remember to subscribe to me on YouTube. You can follow me on Facebook, TikTok. I'm on all social media. And I have a website where you can sign up for free. You can make a free account and I will send you some um, special goodies. I have some things coming up soon. So if you wanna sign up for the website, that would be really awesome. I also have courses and PDFs on my website. So if you want to become a premium member, um, it's about $5 a month right now. We're uh, I'm having a special promotion because um, it's a fairly new website. So um, that, that's not going to be available for very long. But if you'd like to join my courses, please find them uh, on my website. Thank you very much. Nice to see you all today. Please tell me where you are watching from. And let's get into the lesson. OK, so, oh, is this better? Can you see me like this? I think it's uh, good this way. Okay, so we have 10 important idioms that you can use every day. Very good. Okay, so let's get into the first one. We have 10 to go through. The first one is come rain or shine. Come rain or shine. So this means that you guarantee to do something regardless of the weather or any other circumstance that may arise. So originally, I think this idiom is strictly for the weather, but these days we can use it for any situation. Okay, so come rain or shine, I'm definitely going to do something. I promise I will do something no matter what happens. Okay, so here's my example sentence. I'll be at your graduation, come rain or shine. So um, a graduation probably means a graduation ceremony. That's what I'm imagining. So I'll be at your graduation, come rain or shine. Come rain or shine. So if we listen to the pronunciation, come rain or shine. This or in American English becomes very short. Come rain or shine. Come rain or shine. Come rain or shine. Okay, very good. Excellent. We'll go to the next one. Number two, miss the boat. Miss the boat. So the meaning for this one is very, very easy. It means it's too late. It's too late. So if you miss the boat in real life, if you actually miss the boat, that means that you didn't get on the boat. You missed your chance. You missed your opportunity. It's too late, okay? So I'll give you an example sentence. I forgot to submit my photo for the contest and I missed the boat. Okay, I forgot to submit my photo for the contest and I missed the boat. I missed the boat. So again, let's look at the pronunciation. I missed the boat. So here, missed, missed, the, this kind of becomes one sound. I missed the, I missed the, so this kind of D a little bit disappears. I missed the, I missed the, I missed the boat. I missed the boat. Okay, very good. Uh, you can let me know in the comments, um, have you ever missed the boat? Were you too late for something? Um, oftentimes when I have a deadline, uh, sometimes, not often, sometimes I miss the boat. It's too late. Okay, 
Ooh, I like this one because we do use this a lot in America. Sell like hotcakes. Sell like hotcakes. So uh, if you don't know what hotcakes are, hotcakes are kind of like uh, pancakes, I believe. They're like pancakes. So maybe pancakes are very popular. Hotcakes are very popular. So if something is selling like hotcakes, it means it's selling fast. It's popular. Many people are buying them. Okay. Here's my example. These new sunglasses are selling like hotcakes. Selling like hotcakes. Okay. Let's listen to the pronunciation. Selling like hot cakes. So in American English, the T is very mysterious. This T is uh, gone at the end of hot. So usually we don't pronounce it hot. We'll say hot, hot. And uh, if you want to um, join my pronunciation course, the pronunciation course is on my website for premium members. Okay, you'll learn why we don't pronounce the T at the end of hot. Okay. Uh, Malik said, I once missed the boat when I didn't buy the graphic card when it was in stock. Yes. So if you forget to buy something and then it's not available anymore, sorry, you missed the boat. Very good. Uh, do you know anything that is selling like hotcakes right now? Um, I think probably that usually the new iPhones sell like hotcakes, right? Everyone buys them up pretty quickly. They go very fast. Okay. The next one, fair and square, fair and square. So this means honestly and fairly, without cheating, without lying, fair and square. Okay. Don't complain. They won the game fair and square. Very good. Don't complain. They won the game fair and square. Okay. And again, if we listen to the pronunciation, fair and square, fair and square. So a lot of the times when we have and um, in American English, we tend to just say the n mm sound. Fair and square, fair and square, fair and square. So if you're wondering why you can't hear the and when I pronounce fair and square, it's because I'm kind of shortening it. I'm saying just the N sound, fair and square, fair and square. Okay. Oh, Danielle said, uh, as kids, my little brother wouldn't play fair and square. He'd always cheat. Good example. Yes, so fair and square means not cheating. So if you don't play fair and square, that means you are cheating or something is um, not exactly honest. Okay. Oh, thank you for uh, joining the website, uh, Nov. Thank you so much. Okay. Ah, Ali says, Pakistan qualified for the semifinal, fair and square. Very good. So without cheating, honestly. Very good. Fair and square. I like this one. I use, we used to use it a lot when I was a kid when we were playing games. But you can use this in daily life when you want to say something is honest or fair. Okay. This one, down for the count. Down for the count. Okay. So this one, um, I was reminded of this idiom when I was uh, doing a lesson with a student and we were watching a video and someone said their child was down for the count. So what this means is unconscious or soundly asleep. So if you don't know what soundly asleep means, it means like um, very much asleep, in deep sleep. Okay, so this idiom comes from, I think it's uh, wrestling or boxing. So when one person, you know, hits the other, 
and that person goes down, there is a referee and they count one, two, three. I think they go up to 10, right? So that means if they stay down, they lost, right? They stay down. They are maybe knocked out. They are unconscious. So it comes from like wrestling or boxing, um, those kinds of sports down for the count. But um, when we use it in our everyday life, it means asleep, asleep, like really deeply asleep. Okay, so here's my example. The kids are down for the count. Hopefully they don't wake up during the night. Very good. The kids are down for the count. Hopefully they don't wake up during the night. Okay, so it means that they are very much asleep and uh, hopefully they won't wake up during the night. Okay, they're down for the count. Excellent. Very good. I see lots of example sentences in the live chat. So um, if you are watching this or if you're watching it at a later date, you can um, put your example sentences in the comments. I really appreciate it. Okay. Oh, Aliawan said, during the history lesson, my friend would be down for the count. So maybe that means your friend is sleeping during the history lesson. Oh, no. Okay. Very good. Excellent. Let's go to the next one. Easier said than done. This one is a very, very common idiom that we have. So easier said than done, um, I think is pretty easy to understand. It means that you can easily talk about something, but it is difficult to do. Okay. Easily talked about, but difficult to do easier said than done. Okay, so it's easy to give advice or it's easy to say that you will do something, but when you actually try to do it, when you put it into practice, it's not that easy, okay? So here's my example. I hope you can write an example also. If you want to lose weight, all you have to do is eat less and exercise more. But that is easier said than done. That is easier said than done. So all you have to do is eat less and exercise more. That's so easy. That's the solution. Oh, but that's easier said than done. When you actually try, maybe um, you have a very busy schedule. It's difficult to exercise every day. Maybe you don't have time to cook, so you eat McDonald's and it's hard to lose weight. Very good. Okay. Excellent. I'm just looking at the comments. They say I should save up for a new car as if it were that easy. Easier said than done, I tell them. Very good, very good. Yes. Um, so it's, it's easy to say, just save up for a new car. But if you don't have um, that much money, if you have other expenses, that is easier said than done. Very good. I'll speak like a native to Brie, but this is easier said than done. I think you're on, on the right track. You're doing very well. Trying to stay up all night without sleep is easier said than done. Yes, I, I agree. It is quite difficult to stay up, the, especially the older you get. I feel um, it's harder to stay up at night. Very good. Okay, we'll go to the next one. This one I really like. Give it a whirl. Give it a whirl. Okay. Have you ever heard this one before? Give it a whirl. I think I've mentioned it in a previous lesson before. Give it a whirl, okay? The meaning is to give something a try. So to try something new, something you've never tried before. Give it a whirl, okay? So here is mine. I have never been scuba diving, but I'd like to give it a whirl, okay? I have never been scuba diving, but I'd like to give it a whirl. Here again, let's listen to the pronunciation. Give it a whirl. You'll notice that this T and it, 
becomes a like a D sound. Give it a, give it a, give it a, give it a, give it a whirl, give it a whirl. Again, if you would like to uh, take part in my pronunciation course, you can sign up to be a premium member on my website. I have that course available. Okay. Taking a shower in the winter is easier said than done. Oh, yeah. If it's cold water, it might be a little bit easier said than done. You can score high on the test. You should give it a whirl. Yeah, very good. If you're nervous about something, somebody can say, yeah, it'll be okay. Give it a whirl. Ah, what does whirl mean? So whirl, um, I think here, uh, if you know what a whirlpool is, like in water, um, if you've ever seen water um, whirling around, this is whirl. <laughs> I don't know why we say give it a whirl for try, but a whirl is like a, this action is a whirl. Okay, so like um, a whirlpool is when you see water in the sea that's going like this. Have you ever seen that? It's very cool. I went on a cruise and I, I saw water like this and it was very interesting. But I'm not sure why we say give it a whirl and that means try. It's just an idiom, so it doesn't really make sense, right? Very good. Okay. The next one, fish out of water. Fish out of water. Okay. If you are a fish out of water, it means you are out of your comfort zone. You are out of your comfort zone. So when you're in your comfort zone, that means you are comfortable. Maybe you have friends or family who you feel very comfortable with, right? So when you're out of your comfort zone, maybe you're in a new place or you're with new people. So you're a little bit uncomfortable, okay? You're a fish out of water. So if we look at the idiom, a fish belongs in water. It can breathe in water. It can swim in water. When you bring a fish out of water, it's kind of flopping around. It doesn't know what to do. So a fish out of water is when you are uncomfortable, okay? So here's my example. You can feel free to write your example in the comments. I was a fish out of water on my first day at my new school, but I eventually made good friends, okay? So I was a fish out of water on my first day at my new school, but I eventually made good friends. Okay, so let's listen to the pronunciation. Fish out of water. Fish out of water. So you can pronounce of clearly if you like. Fish out of water. But when we talk really quickly at a native speed, I was a fish out of water. I was a fish out of, out of. It's going to become out of instead of out of. Okay? Very good. Let's see. Yes, fish out of water. Okay. Uh, Daniel says, I feel like a fish out of water when I'm socializing with teens. So awkward. Very good. Yes. So when you are socializing with people who are younger than you, you might feel like a fish out of water. Very good. Let's see. Uh, Pakistan will have to be a fish out of water to win the 2021 Cricket World Cup. Ah, so they'll be out of their comfort zone. Okay. When I started to arrive in America, I feel like a fish out of water. Yes, maybe when you first arrived in America, you felt like a fish out of water. You're out of your comfort zone. You're in a new place, a new country speaking a new language, very uncomfortable. You're a fish out of water. You've been taken from your natural environment and put somewhere else, okay? Very good, everyone, excellent. Ah, so um, Aliawan has a question. How do you pronounce the word is debit, debit, D-E-B-I-T, debit, debit, okay? 
like a debit card, debit card. Sometimes we, um, when we speak quickly, the T at the end disappears, a debit card. Um, that is just the nature of American pronunciation though. Okay, Ted Ted Wynn said, living in a foreign country is a fish out of water because we are not in the same culture, food and lifestyle. Yes, so when you live in a foreign country, you are a fish out of water. Very good, yes. Okay. All right. Go the extra mile. Go the extra mile. Okay. The meaning is to make a special effort to achieve something. So you make a special effort or you give us give an extra effort to achieve something. So when we say go the extra mile, um, mile is a, a measurement of distance. So if your teacher tells you to go 50 miles, but you go 51 miles, oh, you did even better than I expected. You put in extra effort, okay? Here's my example. The students were willing to go the extra mile to impress their teacher. So the students were willing, they wanted to go the extra mile. They wanted to put in the extra effort to impress their teacher, okay? So the extra mile just means extra effort, okay? Very good. All right, the last one. Step up your game. I love this one. Step up your game. So this means to improve your performance. Okay, improve your performance, get better at something, do something um, better. Okay, so here is my example. If you want to get that promotion, you're going to have to step up your game. Okay, so we can say step up my game, step up your game, step up his game. All right, if you want to get that promotion, you're going to have to step up your game. So that means maybe at work, if you want a promotion, you're going to have to improve your performance at work. You're going to have to show that you can do things very well at your job. Then maybe you can get a promotion, but you need to step up your game first. You need to improve your performance, okay? Ah, very good. With this video, I'm going to step up my game. Am I right? You are right. Very good. Okay. Uh, oh, Aliwan said, I went the extra mile to improve my web development skills. Wonderful. Excellent sentence. Uh, in my swimming sessions, our coach always pushes us to go the extra mile. I got to step up my game to keep up with the rest. Excellent. Very good sentences. Awesome. Ah, very good. Okay. So I think that was uh, all 10. I think I can put some comments on the screen now. Thank you for the lesson. I'm going to hit the sack. Very good. Hit the sack is another idiom that we've learned oops, that we've learned uh, a few times. Uh, it means to go to sleep. So you'll be down for the count. You're going to hit the sack. Very good. Okay. If he wants to be a part of our team, he will have to step up his game. Wonderful. Good example. Awesome. Okay. Step up your game, formal or informal. I would say that most of the idioms that I taught you today are maybe neutral or informal, but they're used in conversation. So you can use them with your family, friends, you can use them at work. That's okay. Um, I would just maybe recommend not using some of them if you are like writing a report or you need to be very, very formal, then maybe you want to avoid some of these. But if you're talking, if you're speaking, even if it's to um, your colleague at your work, they're okay to use, okay? Very good, okay. So 
that was it for today's lesson. If you want to um, sign up for free on my website, you are welcome to do so. I have some things coming that I think you guys will like. Um, so if you sign up, you'll be able to get um, emails from me and I will be able to send you um, PDFs and things like that. And I also have a course on my website. Um, I'll be adding more courses uh, as, I, as I film them. Um, so yes, if you want to join me, I hope you will. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right. Oh, let's put up one more. The newbie actor has a lackluster performance, but I believe that he can step up his game if he wants to succeed. Well done, well done. So newbie, newbie means like someone is new. Um, so a newbie actor maybe does not have a lot of experience and a lackluster, lackluster means um, um, kind of dull, it's lacking effort. So not a very good performance, okay? But I believe that he can step up his game. He can improve his performance if he wants to succeed. Well done, very good. Okay, so thank you all so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who signed up to my website. I'll be sending you an email very soon. Um, and yes, thank you so much. And I hope to see you in our next lesson. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye.